Hey guys, welcome to Matt Skinner TV. Today we're going to talk about compound equity. Now I know you've heard of compound interest. Anybody in the financial world, anybody that's in the investment world has already heard of compound interest. That's simply the circumstance where you've made an investment and you're earning interest on your money and then you reinvest that interest payment so it earns interest on the interest. That's called compound interest. By the way, in our high yield real estate bond, we have two options inside of that investment. You can invest as little as $10,000 with a maximum investment of $1 million and it pays out 8%, 10% or 12% depending on what you select as the investor. Now, inside of that, once you've decided how much you're going to invest and once you've decided what return on investment you want to make, the next choice that you would make inside of our high yield real estate bond, we call it the simple growth by the way, the next choice that you're going to make is are you going to take cash flow distributions, get a check in the mail every quarter, right? Or are you going to reinvest that interest and turn it into compound interest? Compound interest is a powerful, powerful tool. We'll have more on that in another episode of Matt Skinner TV. But right now what I want to talk about is compound equity. Now this is something that most people probably haven't heard of because, well, frankly, I made it up. I invented this term. Compound equity is the circumstance where we're going to take the down payment that we use to buy one cash flowing apartment complex and we're going to buy the apartment building, we're going to fix up the apartment building, we're going to get all new tenants into the apartment building and then what we're going to do is refinance the apartment building and get all of our down payment back from the bank meanwhile keeping the asset for cash flow, tax benefits and growth. Right? This is, this is so powerful. I mean, I used to flip houses and then I realized that I couldn't keep all those houses that I was fixing up, putting all that work into. I'd fix them up and I'd sell them. I'd fix them up and I'd sell them. Or I'd buy some land, I'd build something and I'd sell it. But that just meant I had to do it again and again and again. And so what I came to realize is with apartments, banks love to finance apartment complexes. So what I'm able to do, what I discovered was I could buy these apartment buildings add tons of value using my 17 years as a general contractor experience, as a builder, as a developer. I know how to put these sticks and bricks together like nobody else, right? So I put these pro projects together. I buy older apartment complexes. I add a ton of value, increase the value of the asset, and I can go back to the bank and say, hey, listen, I have a new net operating income. I love apartments because it's all just math. There's no emotional conversation about the appraised value of an apartment complex. It's just numbers. So I know when all my units rent for this amount that my value is, you know, uh, is, a, is a determined amount. Like there's no conversation. There's no like we're not sure what the value is. It's just all dependent on how much the income is minus the expenses gives us our net operating income multiplied by the uh, cap rate. Very simple equation. So let me show you how this compound equity uh, works out. First, we're going to use the example we buy this apartment complex for $4 million and then I go to the bank and they give me a $3 million loan. That's a 75% loan to value on my apartment complex. This is all basic stuff so far. That means that I'm required to come in with $1 million as a down payment. Now, what if I knew that if I invested another half a million dollars in renovations on this project and I knew that my rents would be able to increase substantially enough that when this work was done, my apartment complex would be worth six million after completion based on the rents, based on the income and the expenses. Now this is, this is what we know when I go in, I know how much I have to spend, how much do I have to invest to increase the rents to a certain target price. And when those rents hit that certain target price, I'm going to get a brand new valuation. We call this a stabilized market value, SMV, stabilized market value. It means when I have tenants paying this amount of rent, there's no question that this asset will be worth $6 million. So going over this once again, we buy the building for $4 million. I borrow $3 million, 75% loan to value from the bank. Traditional loan, great interest rate, great terms, not a lot of risk. No, this isn't, this isn't like hard money or anything like that. We put, come up with $1 million down payment and $500,000 in renovations. That gives me a $1.5 million 
cash investment required to buy this asset, right? When I do the work, I buy the asset, I do the work, we raise the rents, we hit our valuation. It usually takes us between 16 to 24 months total to get through this process, to go through this cycle of emptying out the building one unit at a time, renovating the units, renovating the exterior, and doing all of the work. I'm going to go back to the bank with my $6 million valuation, and I'm going to ask them for a new loan or a refinance. And they're going to say, okay, we're going to give you 75% loan to value based on the new appraisal. Well, with the new rents and with the, with the expenses the way that they are, I know that the value and that appraisal is going to come in at $6 million. They give me, what's 75% of $6 million? 4.5. How much money do I got into this purchase? I got 4.5 million. I got a $3 million loan to pay off back to the bank when I refinance. And I've got $1.5 million in cash down payment to give back to the investors, to put back in my pocket, right? Put all that cash that we utilize to buy this asset right back into our pocket. And what do we do when we get big, big fat checks in our pocket? We reinvest it and we duplicate it and we repeat the process. So we take that same $1.5 million that we just got back out of this asset, we continue to own this asset that we acquired with zero money in invested now, right? What's the return on investment in a deal that you have no money invested in? If you've got zero dollars in and it's kicking out cash flow, it's kicking out tax benefits, and it's growing every single month that you write a mortgage check, pay downs, pays down the principal balance on that property, your balance sheet is increasing every single month. And then when this property goes up in value because we only buy in emerging markets. We only buy in markets where values are going up. We only go buy assets in markets where rents are raising. So what happens when we own this property with zero money invested in it? It's called an infinite return. So we get our infinite return asset and then we take the same monies out of that deal and go buy another deal. And we rinse, wash, repeat rent and just do it over and over again, duplicating the same success over and over again with the same money. And that's what we call compound equity. Thanks for watching Matt Skinner TV. Check out the next episode.